You're watching Ned the Dead and Doc Moreau. Check out their stuff at nedthedead.com. Welcome to Chiller Theater. Sorry. Ned the Dead. Doc Moreau. Featuring. Hey everybody, it's Chiller Theater. I'm Ned the Dead. This is Dr. Moreau. It's the end of the year and that means only one thing. Logan. <laughs> That's right, everybody. The preening of the horrible Logan. That's how you know the New Year is about to come is. begin is because oh. Logan is preening and getting ready for the big New Year's party. What are you doing for New Year's Eve, Doc? I'm probably going to cruise the channels for some uh, movie marathons or something. I like, I like gold movies. You're an exciting <laughs> son of a buck. Yeah, I wonder why you're on this show. I, on the other hand, will be making about 1,500 pizza rolls mm -hmm. and trying to consume every one. I actually suck the pizza out of them. I don't really like the outer crust, but I like the gooey pizza stuff on the inside. So what I do is I cook them in the, uh, cook them. In the oven. No, but here's, I've got a system worked out. <laughs> I use them. two different uh, trays, and I just keep filling and inserting the tray. And once it comes out, and they only take five to seven minutes, I'm able to begin to suck the funk out of one pizza roll while the others are in the oven so i'll do 32 sucks of the pizza roll oh. and don't go close because i'm looking i'm a little haggard the mag the, the makeup is it's taking a pounding tonight i don't know what's happened just driving here the makeup suddenly got kind of messed up and i don't really know why now oh yeah, yeah. Oh. i guess obviously dr Merle feels out. it could potentially be a tough night oh oh a tough, ah here we as go as the new year approaches right. oh, as the new year approaches we have our very, our own noise makers, and oh, we'll be using these tonight. The lights movie is called Oh Invasion, Invasion of the Vampires. Oh, stuff's got to warm up. Oh, hold on, we'll get her going. It's a nice. good-looking black and white oh, movie. You're gonna is. love it. Hang in there. Oh, there is good stuff.
Cassio, it's Paulino. That's Recrescencio. He shouldn't have gone to the lake. This is frightening. That awful pallid look. It makes a man shudder. Just like the others. He's paler than a dead man. Did he go to the woods? Don't they always? Where they come near the water's edge? Come on now. You saw what occurred, didn't I tell you? Why don't you do as I suggested and stay the night in my village? Tragedy attacks on these moonlit nights at the Hacienda, I swear. They're only superstitions. Oh, no, sir. I tell you that some young man dies when full moon is upon us. But that's a coincidence. How does the moon affect the situation? On these nights, the Count Spirit goes to the lake. He lives in hell. Such dark ignorance. Well, I guess it's like you say, sir, but we had better turn around and go back now. You can go return if you like. I'll go on to the haunted Hacienda anyway. With your permission, then, please leave my carriage in town at the Alcalde's house. Don't worry, you'll have it back tonight. Presentation for the Senor Marquis, Don Gonzalo Guzman de la Selva. At this late hour, sir. I was delayed a little. I've been traveling ten days. My home is in the capital. I wonder where there's a hacienda farther away than this. Let me see.
I welcome you to this humble house, Dr. Ulysses Albaran. Thank you, Senor Marquis. My professor was not mistaken when he assured me that I'd be courteously received by Your Excellency. Your professor and I, more than very good friends, are almost like brothers. And in spite of the many long years that have separated us, we still have a great deal of affection for each other. But please sit down, Doctor, in that chair right there. Now tell me, how is my friend Alejandro? Why, he's younger than ever. Life seems to stand still for him. Yes, yes. He always used to say that he created a special elixir to prolong his lifespan. Nothing is impossible for such a sage who's realized fabulous experiments, sir. But this trip was motivated by certain fantastic studies that could revolutionize all that is known about the matter. We realize that this beautiful hacienda is the best place to make the experiments that could furnish us with proof. Right here? Yes, Senor Marquis. The professor seems to think that this region around here is ideal. In that case, Doctor, are we going to be seeing Count Cagliostro? No, Senor Marquis. That's impossible just at the moment. That's why he sent me here. You see, sir, I'm his most advanced student in this specialty. I do hope that this is not an indiscretion. But exactly what is the subject that you're studying? I study vampires. Could you please tell me just why your teacher thinks that here... I don't know, sir. But the man has such knowledge. He's wise, the same as his great-grandfather, Jose Balsamo. But I swear that he maintains a certain magical power, and with this he is more astute than other mortals are. I think he must be psychic. That's the only way to explain it. Well, how can I be useful? I'd like to work on this new project in your house. You're welcome here. My house is yours, sir, as long as you deem it necessary. The man can't stay here not one minute longer. Who says he can't stay? I do. When anyone visits this house and is sent by Count Cagliostro, then I'll consider him my friend and my guest. But the Marquis knows that he can't stay a moment longer. It's quite impossible. That's enough, Fraulein Hildegard. I said Dr. Albaran can't stay. And I warn you, Senor Marquis, this is extremely dangerous, you know. But you would like to experience a little danger, wouldn't you? I'm sorry that because of me, uh, you have... Ah, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Fraulein Hildegard is a hard-working woman, faithful and efficient. But at times, she forgets that she's not the master, she's my servant. This is it. What's happening? That's Father Victor and he's calling to that young fellow soul. Now it's with the devil and he wants it to return. What? Yes, the priest says that the devil is the one that murdered all these boys. And he thinks he can straighten things out through prayer. You confuse me, old fellow. Don't you hear good? Well, I don't understand. I must admit it. Now then, please explain. Exactly what deaths are you talking about? And how does Satan figure in this? Well, I'm confused too, sir. Guess I'm ignorant because I don't understand. Why don't you begin asking Senor Maximo? And just who is he? He's the alcalde here. His boy's the one that died. He's the judge of the law enforcer. Tell the mayor then that I want to talk to him. Right away, sir. Alcalde, sir. It's this way. I'll take you. You're watching Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Mr. Christian, come here. 
Who ate my post toasties? Who ate my post toasties? Let's all hurry to the grocery store to tell that man we gotta have more post toasties. For goodness sake, get post toasters! Some cornflakes. Oh, Captain Bly, he knows what's good, just like a right smart skipper should. He likes his cornflakes crisp and sweet, so the only kind he'll ever eat is Post Toasters! We've searched the world from east to west. Of all the cornflakes, they're the best. Sweet as a mermaid. Crisp as a breeze. The best cornflakes on the seven seas. Post Toasters! For goodness sake, get Post Toasters! Some cornflakes. Welcome back to Chillin' Theater. Hey, you know, I got a special... Uh, we're back, everyone, by the way. This is the uh, New Year version. You know what happened here? This is some of this stuff, this stuff that noise putty, they call it. You know, but what happened is somebody must have taken it out and oh. got it dirty, so it has a bunch of little chunks of stuff in it. And I don't really like that because it doesn't feel as good. And, uh, oh, look at I have nasty little hands. Don't I have little hands? I have hands like a little monkey. Look, go ahead, take a tight shot of the hands. Just of the, I have, don't I have little monkey hands? Look, like the little monkey working. Uh, yeah, look, look at the little monkey work the putty. Look at the monkey work the putty. Yeah, he's doing the monkey. <laughs> What? That was weird. That felt weird. I do noise. That do it. Do the noise to my neck again. It's not. No. no make the noise again. We're doing Go it to ahead. your microphone. No, you're not though. Dude, have you ever leaned in it? You're leaning into a man and making a noise at his neck. No, it's not to my microphone. What if, you know, think about the bigger picture here, right? Just because I'm wearing a microphone, does that disqualify from being a man where you just lean in and make a horrible sucking noise by my neck? What was, make the noise again. One Sorry. more time. Sorry. We'll make the noise one more time. Let's hear it one more time. Excuse me. It's make a little the noise it's one more It's a little more. monkey sound. One, make it again. Make it again. It <laughs> is... <laughs> It is so bad. It is very, it's more like a squirrel, I believe. Don't you? Here, let me make, I got some noises, monkey noises for you. There we go. Now, wow, the putty's getting warm. Poor monkey. Oh, monkey the putty's getting warm. Oh, yeah, monkeys, they'll make this sound. Will they? Yeah, one, one of them climbs up on the other and then. <laughs> that's, why they, that's why being a monkey is so fun. You what, know what I'm saying? What color bananas is that yeah. monkey eating? Oh, oh the overripe brown ones. I think the show should end. The will be here in a moment, sir. Excuse me, please. What can I do for you? Please excuse the interruption at this tragic hour. I'd like to extend my sincere sympathy knowing that your boy was killed tonight. Thank you. But permit me to introduce myself first. Dr. Ulysses Albaran, your servant. I'll not talk to persons that abide in the haunted hacienda, young man. I might be able to help you, although you can't accept that. No. Why should I need your services? My son's been killed. There are things worse than death, Mayor. No, nothing's worse in my mind than never seeing my son again. Listen. Would you want your son to return as a living human to all effects and purposes, but quite dead in reality? With a mission to create havoc and panic in other humans' hearts? Are you ridiculing me and my son, making light of my tears and agony? You're about to learn just what I do to all charlatans. You're not looking at any charlatan. I graduated as a doctor. I came here to begin work on a long experiment, sir. And I'm sure that it is closely related to these murders that have caused all this tragedy to your people. But I can't begin alone. I need your aid in this undertaking. You all can help me. Do you know how it began in the first place, I'll call it? One lonely moonlit night, the Count and Countess went to take a ride around midnight. A while later, the horses returned to the Hacienda terrified. And then the next day, they ran across the corpse of the Countess lying there on the shores of the dead man's lake. And the Count just disappeared completely, like the earth had swallowed him. You know those cases. Who's the Count you're referring to, Alcalde? It is Count Frankenhausen. 
Frankenhausen. And the haunted house he entered that had been a blessing to the folks around here has turned into a curse that plagues us all. You see, on nights like tonight, the Count's gentle lady returns to this region. She goes from the hacienda through the trees toward Dead Man's Lake, and there she disappears beneath the cold waters. The young men in my small village go crazy. One usually escapes to follow her down to the lakeside. And the next day they find his body in the same spot that the Countess was killed, and you know what makes me shudder? Their drained, pallid complexion that no other dead body has. It happened to my son. There are so many important facts in all that you've told me. But now I think we may soon clear up these mysterious deaths. Well, I'm sure now that the deaths aren't mysterious, Doctor. I know before I made fun of Father Victor when he said that the devil killed him. Now that I've seen death close to me, I tell you that Satan is the one who robs their spirits when they're out there. For example, other parents start to do desperate things. They begin to stray away from God. Those murders are the work of Satan. Those murders are the work of the people that were killed. This has nothing to do with hell or the devil either. This gentleman here might start to think that we're all idiots in this little town, my friend. I did not ask you to interrupt the conversation, Don Efren. Don't be rude. It concerns me also, Don Maximo. It concerns me also. Since I'm the doctor in this beggarly town, I can't allow any person to start to doubt my efficiency. Permit me to introduce myself, young man. Efren Lopez, I'm a doctor, or a physicist, as some stupid morons call me because they're so ignorant that they can't tell the difference. This place is just a mud hole. There's no civilization. That's just a word here. And it won't change, because it's still under the rule of a stagnant family, sir. Dr. Ulysses Alvaran, I'm honored. Say, that's perfect. <laughs> then we are colleagues. I'm afraid that's not the case. I'm sorry, you see, I studied alchemy in the occult sciences, not medicine. Don Efren's no doctor. He's, he's only a healer. I'm a doctor. And although I didn't go through school, I've had many long years of practice, and in that way I obtained knowledge and facts that many scientists haven't got. I agree with you, sir. Upon my word, that is wonderful. I know how rapidly you'll understand when I explain it. Only you can explain it later on, Don Efren. Are you against hearing his opinion? It's only that I've heard it several times. Not only that, he convinced me on one occasion. Excuse me, please. The Alcalde is going to turn into a madman any day now. He's just too whimsical and emotional. Little drink, Doctor? No, I'm not a drinker. Thank you. Well, you don't know what you're missing. This is excellent brandy. Go on, Don Efren. Well then, in this town, all the people are going completely crazy. So you see, that explains our general ailment. <laughs> and it's much less complicated reasoning than the mystic theorizing of Don Victor the priest here. Well, I accept your reasoning, but how can this be related to the many deaths that apparently occur on nights like tonight? It's very simple, Doctor. All those men have heart attacks. We could say that the Count's death produce the situation. The way I see it, this thing is collective, sir. A general dread that is all concentrated in one individual. And this single man starts to imagine that her spirit, her fantastic spirit, is out there in the shadows. He is attracted, as the sirens attracted Ulysses, until all the emotion and the effort drain the lad's strength, and the result, a heart attack. Your theory is very personal. Only up to now, I don't know much, and obviously I can't judge efficiently. On a later occasion, I'd be delighted to chat with you, Doctor. Many thanks for your explanation. I like you, and I respect you, sir. You were kind to listen.
must make haste. Don't worry about the stranger, for I drugged his food last night. We hereby Senor Count Siegfried of Frankenhausen was united in matrimony with Senorita Eugenie Guzman de la Selva, who was heir to the Marquis' estates. No, I'm sorry, there is nothing useful here. Well, then, right here I register the child's birth. The girl is called Brunhilda. Mm -hmm. Named Brunhilda by the will of her father, Count Siegfried of Frankenhausen. This is no help at all. Then look here. This is a long list. I've registered their deaths right here. Por la misteriosa enfermedad. Llevo un registro aparte. Y los cadáveres también... They're not lying near the other bodies in the cemetery. Or you might say, it's a special section where I laid them. Are you trying to say that they're not buried? I certainly not. They'll get their burial when I can be totally sure that Satan and his aides didn't have anything to do with their deaths. Why, who can tell? They might stay there in that section until doomsday. There are 23 here. Including the young countess who heads the list. In that case, sir, you know nothing about the situation then? Nothing about this Count Frankenhausen? I don't. No one does. You're saying the Marquis granted his daughter's hand to a man that was only claiming royalty? He didn't investigate this Frankenhausen? He did not. The Marquis is now paying the consequence for this. Since the Count disappeared that lonely night and his poor daughter died, he's been closed up in the Hacienda. And no one has visited him there either. Not in many months. Well, I... I forgot you. But, uh, the Count's daughter, Brunhilde? Mm, looks like she disappeared as well. There are some that say she followed her father, since she adored him so. She must have followed the scoundrel right down to Hades, where they were taken by Satan. Could be that they wanted to go there. <laughs> you don't put any credence in these strange stories, do you? Why not? The old Marquis used to go to church, and now he denies God. And as for Count Frankenhausen, nothing is strange because he's a heretic. Now tell me, have you ever seen the coat of arms of Count Frankenhausen? Never. Not even when I entered the Hacienda, when they still wanted me there. He didn't wear it upon his shirts, nor did I see it in the places where all the nobles do wear it. You know... You know, that surprised me, too, because it's certainly unusual. Should I confirm my suspicions? It's not strange at all. A man who wants to hide his origin has secrets. The coat of arms related to Frankenhausen is notable. And once you have seen it, you never can forget it. The whole setting is in black like the night. Also, there's a German shield in silver, and upon that, a Gothic F in a red color, which represents death to the firstborn of each generation. There's a crown there, too. Sitting upon that, its long wings extended, totally black and very ugly, a lone vampire. A lone vampire?
watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Nothing? Well, it's your coffee. Again? Even today? Honey, your coffee just doesn't taste any good. Mr. McGregor? What's wrong, Jeannie? My coffee, it just isn't any good. And on my anniversary, too. Well, I think you should try new Instant Folgers. Instant Folgers? No, I said new Instant Folgers. Today's Instant Folgers taste good as fresh perch because it's made from fresh perch coffee. Then that fresh perch coffee is turned into new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perch because it is. Fresh perch. Right. Mr. McGregor, I'll try it. Good. Wonderful anniversary, darling, in every way. Even the coffee. It's new instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perch. <laughs> I like it better. New instant Folgers. Tastes good as fresh perch because it is. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. Hey, it's Fraulein Hildegard. How about that? Oh, What's with yeah. other German names? Frankenhausen? I like it. it this is Mexico, folks. I course. like Fraulein Hildegard. It sounds like she should have, I mean, that's got to be a, sounds like she should have a beard. Don't you think? A big beard and mustache. She reminds me like of that? Frau Blucher in Young Frankenstein. Frau Blucher! I've been waiting for the horses. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, boy, they got some nice looking facial hair in this movie. And I always, I like the movies where they got the good, where was this movie made? What is this one? Mexico. Yeah, it's a Mexico. <laughs> Down because, Mexico. Boy, they way. got the nice, they got the really nice facial hair. And you know, some movies, like people who have wispy, see, now I have a wispy. You have nice facial hair. See, and you don't it's even. It's prickly, though. Well, it I is. Could, I could give you a heck of a rash. Well, no, it is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Why do you, you make chirping, <laughs> horrible chirping noises by me? And then you, uh, it is, it is. You know, I just don't know that I could be with someone that had a beard. I just don't think so. You know what I'm saying? If I had that, like, day to day and you're waking up and getting all scratched up and stuff like that with the beard, I, I don't just know. wish I could get my, my hind leg up against my beard like the dog can. Because that looks like it feels so good. Well, see, I now see, I disagree. You know, there's all right. Let's examine one of the old jokes about the dog. You know, they always say, "Why does the dog do such and such?" Because it can. You've heard that joke, right? Right? Because it can. Dog right? can do that too. You know what? I have the feeling though that it isn't because it can. It's because it must. Because when you really think about it, if you could, let's say that you could raise the leg up like that. Okay? Would you really want to do that? <laughs> Tell answer. Answer. Would you really want to do that? Well, I don't think so. I think the dog I must know. do it, and therefore it's because the dog must. Lindsay Lohan might. <laughs> oh, Britney Spears <laughs> might. They, yeah, Britney Spears. That was a lovely moment there, Britney, with the, uh, you know, you'd like to be the uh, whatever. And it's you know just what? amazing. It's Oops, amazing. she did it again. Yeah, very, very nice. All right, everybody, let's get back to the movie. I want to talk about she did it again. Get out of here. <laughs>
I was looking for a book. I uh, couldn't get to sleep. Doctor, didn't you know it is prohibited to enter here? You are abusing my master's hospitality. You are rude and most ungentlemanly, sir. Respect our old customs here. I'm sorry. But I'll apologize tomorrow, don't worry. Please tell me, where's the girl that fainted? She was there an instant ago. I don't know anything about it. There's no one like that around this place. Oh, come now. The young woman was there a moment ago. I repeat, you are wrong. There is no girl in this place. Do you think I'm so stupid? A moment ago I saw her. There! You're imagining things, Doctor. I think it better that you return to the capital. I'd hate to see you in any trouble, and if you don't do so, that's exactly what awaits you in these woods. Then I'm crazy. Is that your insinuation? No, I insinuated nothing. Release me. You are not to return here, and remember this warning. You should know that the Marquis is very easily angered when his house guests try to meddle in his business in defiance of his orders. Let's hope Father Victor doesn't learn I resorted to the sacrilege. You're helping humanity. There's nothing to lament. Just the same, I posted a man back there. I don't want anyone to find us. I've seen facial features so much alike. What's that? She looks like the twin of a girl I saw last night at the Marquise. She's wearing the same clothes. You saw her spirit at his house. That explains it. Although it appears that it was her spirit, that's just not logical. That's part of the mystery that I'd like to unravel. There it is. See where he bit her? This confirms all the stories. And Count Frankenhausen is a vampire also. A vampire? I thought I heard you say a vampire, sir. Exactly. A vampire that wants blood. He's a killer. He commands all the others whose corpses appear to be harmless. But in reality, they are dangerous the way he is. Because those corpses are vampires. Are you trying to say, Doctor, that my son has been... I'm afraid so, Alcali. I saw the marks on his neck. Your boy's a dead vampire for now, sir. I'm convinced that he's immobilized. He's commanded by his master who... who has them all in a cataleptic trance, waiting to receive orders to leave their coffins. To constitute a danger worse than death itself. Could you tell us, sir, just when... just when they're gonna do that? Yes, I can tell you. At the moment that he dies, the instant that Count Frankenhausen is captured and his heart is pierced by a wooden stake. That means we're in terrible danger. And tell his father? Nothing can happen to him as long as he keeps that torch in his hand. All vampires run from all kinds of fire, their worst enemy.
Another man killed by the vampire. The moon's not full tonight. Doesn't matter. It's quite clear that we angered Count Frankenhausen. Opening his wife's tomb, he came to watch us. Let's get the beast and destroy him. Yes, that's right. He has to be destroyed or he'll come and destroy us. Because now he's really furious. If things are getting that bad, I look for a safe place. You could go and hide anywhere you wanted to and he'd get you there. He not only plans to attack us, the townspeople are in danger just the way we are. All humanity will die sooner or later if we fail now. Doctor, you told me the other night that you were a specialist in this. So we'll all follow you, tell us what's to be done. There's no time to lose. Let's start burning the corpses. Now listen, you know that I lead these people. And I must use emergency measures so that they can't murder any more victims, Father. And I'm ordering you. Now you don't want to see all human beings exposed to this terrible and consuming danger. And the only thing there is that works is to destroy them with fire. If you throw them into the fire, I'll go into the flames and burn myself too. Father, you seem to forget he's my flesh and blood and I'll do as I wish. Don't you dare do anything or I'll excommunicate you. No, Al Kelty, don't do it. This would mean war among the townspeople. We'd just be heaping tragedy upon tragedy. I'll think of something to avoid the invasion of the vampires. How long is that going to take, since we can't wait much longer? Give me time, I'll do it. I advise you to hurry, Doctor. Because you are the cause of the whole thing. I ought to punish you. You are risking excommunication, young man. He's the blame, not you, Doctor. I hold you responsible, so your superiors will know all about this if anybody else is killed by that vampire. And I'll wait only until the next full moon, understand? Return to town this moment. And if you value your life, don't look behind you. Because if you do so, she'll place you in the most horrible living death that anyone could conceive of. Now go. I told you to go.
watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. seen talking dolls but it's true they're the three new soft and cuddly talking dolls by mattel and they really talk there's matty sister bell and casper the friendly ghost each one says 11 different phrases and you never know what they'll say next just pull the magic ring and i love you and you love playing with matty sister bell and casper They'll be waiting to talk to you wherever toys are sold. You can tell it's Mattel. It's swell. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. All right, everybody, we're back. This is, of course, the end of the year show, the New Year's show. Invasion of the Vampires, Chiller Theater. I'm Ned the Dead. This is Dr. Moreau. Hi. All right, wow them with actual I, I have some facts. I have some film lore to lay on you that I've been waiting for. I've been, I've been nursing this nugget for quite a while. <laughs> hey, what are you doing in there? I got to go. I'm nursing a nugget. Good. What are you talking about? It's nice nursing this nugget. Occupado. I like that one. There's a lot of euphemisms. I've never like launched the protein oh. torpedo, stuff like that. I like nursing a nugget. That's quite you, nice. You should know, it would be very edifying to know, all right, that go ahead. all of these Mexican horror movies were yes. brought to the United States by K. Gordon Murray. All right. And he had them all dubbed in English, but he may be more famous for something else. He had a lot of contacts in the in the carnival sideshow world. Yes. And in, he helped the casting director of 1939's The Wizard of Oz round up little people no. for the Munchkin roles. So he did the casting for the Munchkin people? He helped he put the casting director in touch with little people all across the country. Dr. Moreau, ladies and gentlemen, there's times so, when Doc when you come bless through, him for that. That's a sweet New Year's treat for yes. us there, my friend. And yes. in fact, you know, of all the movies, uh, I really, I find that uh, that that movie right there, The Wizard of Oz, I do think yes. that's one of the greatest movies ever made. So. I'm just fantastic. <laughs> Could you make well, a little monkey noise? How did what? I get in the fish tank? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Now, coming up next week, what do we have coming up next week? We have The Mad the Monster. The Mad Monster. That's right. And it's you, actually the beginning of three weeks of monsters. That's right. Three weeks of monsters right here on Chiller Theater. Who would have thunk? That we would have had three actual weeks of monsters. And we've had a lot of discussions about the future here on Chiller Theater. A lot of good things coming up, my friend. A I'm lot of good right things there. coming up. A and, lot of spectacular. And coming lights. around again. That's right. Maybe. Exactly. A lot of the same movies you've seen, but then again, maybe some new delights. We'll be back here to go see the movie now. Go.
Please tell me where the girl's bedroom is in a hurry. Not so fast, Doctor. I'm glad you got here. This man's a moron. He only mumbles. He can't speak, but he's not a moron. Are you saying he has no tongue? Exactly, my dear doctor. He lost it because he talked too much. Brunhilde, my poor little Brunhilde. I found out her name at last. What happened to her? I'll tell you the whole story later. But I should examine her because someone is trying to murder her. Please come along. The man who finds out too much runs the risk of getting murdered also. There's no exact diagnosis. This is also strange, you know. God help me, doctor. He must not take her away. I couldn't bear any more sorrow. Come, Senor Marquis. You're upset. Please, you shouldn't forget that I'm no doctor. I suppose I was alarmed when the telltale symptoms appeared at first, sir. Her eyes were glassy. She showed a paleness. Pupils dilated. And besides that, she had no pulse, sir. So I suspected a heart attack. Only now she's fine. So I really can't think she's in danger. Doctor, tell me the truth. The information isn't complete yet. I need more facts because I'm missing a link in the chain. It's so confusing. Have faith in me, Senor Marquis. I won't explain anything more now. But don't let it affect you like this. Had she suffered a heart attack the way I thought at the start, I assure you that she would be dead right now. But look. Why is she sleeping? Exactly. Sleeping. But it isn't a normal state. In my opinion, it's a hypnotic sleep. Are you trying to say that she dies? As soon as she wakes up, then I can be sure. If she doesn't recall anything that occurred, then I won't have been mistaken. It's the principal characteristic that aids us in diagnosing these cases. Usually the subject obeys the orders of the person who hypnotized her, although she doesn't recall what she has done. In these cases, I know you can be sure. So try not to worry any longer, sir. But who is infamous dog to try to? Is still a person no, must... the most obnoxious person that I know. Why are you here? Don't you know that it's time for your medicine, sir? It's to calm me down. My nerves just can't stand anymore. I'll be going up to my room now. Should she awaken later on, I must be told right away. If she doesn't, I'll return after I get a little rest. And someone should stay at her side. Well, I can do that. How fortunate that I came in. If you ever meddle in my affairs again without my orders. I'll give you a caning that you'll not forget. I'll do it as many times as I think is necessary. The Marquis shows no prudence in these things. And you show no respect either. No me importa nada de lo que me diga. He de ayudar a mi señor. Well, a master as well as the house. And must even though in the end I sacrifice that man and more too. My worry is my granddaughter. I didn't say anything until today. I didn't want her to spread the terrible destiny that awaits her. But my patience and control are not endless, you know. Only mine is infinite. And soon I'll... And right here is the reward I'm going to get. Speak out or you're going to be sorry. Let's see that. Only my master has a right to see this. In this house, let me see. No, only master Count Frankenhausen. intrusion, Doctor, but I came to see if you had retired. Then she's awake, is that the reason? Oh, no, it's only that I came to bring a bit of wine up to you, the Marquis said. To drink it before you go to bed, it can tranquilize you. Why, thank you, that'll be all. Oh, no, permit me. 
What has happened to you, Doctor? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Just some papers I was looking for. I had lost them. Uh, you see? Well, then, I'll be back as soon as I call Nacho to help you. No, I can clean it up quite well. Uh, but thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, then, sir. Oh, I almost forgot something. Please don't worry and get your rest, Doctor, since Brunhilde won't wake up all night long. Explain that, please. Oh, the same thing happens to her frequently. She's a sleepwalker. A sleepwalker? Don't you remember? You were there one night when she had an attack, sir. I'm sure you remember in the study. But the Marquise is ashamed to let other people know. Only I think he's being silly. Why, yes, of course. It's not Brunhilde's fault. That's my opinion also. But in any case, the Marquise goes right on trying to hide the facts. And that is why he doesn't allow Miss Brunhilde to travel. There is another thing. He has even tried to deny her existence. He would have denied her existence to you had you asked about her when you got here and presented your letter the other night. So she's a sleepwalker. Oh, and I was going to ask you this, that you wouldn't say a word about our little talk to the Marquis. I told you last night that before I could finish the job, there were facts that I needed. Yes? I obtained the data. From the gracious Fraulein Hildegard. You mean, uh, how could she help you? When I retired a few hours ago, she went up to the room and began convincing me that the attacks that Brunhilde suffers are not strange, it's only somnambulism. She said that? And besides, she told me I wasn't to tell you because you keep it a secret. Miserable. Well, I'll show her. That isn't the best way, Senor Marquis. I think it better to use her own weapons this time. Secrecy. Don't tell her that we've been talking, sir. Otherwise, we'll lose. I only know that Count Frankenhausen is suffering from an hereditary sickness that is dreadful, Doctor. And my granddaughter cannot be cured yet. She has to wait for her father to find a cure and follow in his footsteps. And it is human blood that he needs. It's the only medicine. Just who told you such a monstrous thing? Hildegard did. My own servant revealed the terrible secret long ago. Count Frankenhausen is a vampire. And Brunhilde will be a vampire too. That is why I decided not to do anything at all to stop these ghastly crimes. What are you saying, sir? Yes. To save my granddaughter's life. I think I'd be capable of murder. But what Your Excellency hasn't been told is that blood is the food of the vampires. And that each new victim becomes a threat in himself. Why, in this way, your granddaughter, as well as Your Excellency, and the others are doomed, sir. In that case, was the whole thing a trick? It can't be true. I hate to say so, but it is. And I tolerate it at all. But I can't begin again now. No, you can't begin again, sir. But you can help me to stop this thing. And I think that there's a way that I can save the girl, but only with your aid. Just save her. And you can have the whole estate, Doctor. You can have all I possess. <sighs> I told you that I might save her, but I can't assure you. The experiments that I explained to you are the object of my trip here. They're based upon a certain product that we call clamic acid. And what's more, the professor thinks that this is the only way that we can put a stop to this terrible plague. Now listen, if my friend Alejandro says so, then it's true. What are you waiting for then? My granddaughter is right here. Why are we wasting so much time? I beg of you, Marquise, calm down. Try to calm down. It's more complicated than you imagine. And now it's worse. You see, someone opened my trunk and stole the instructions that my professor gave me to obtain this rare acid. Then they robbed you right here, in my own house? Who? Who knows? We might accuse Frau Hildegard. Frau? I see. It had to be her. Now I recall when she started to talk about a reward Yes, and... but it doesn't matter. There's nothing to worry about since I memorized the method of obtaining it. I'll return to the capital because I can only extract it in a laboratory. No, 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 no. You work right here in my house. You see, Count Frankenhausen used to dabble in alchemy here. And naturally, he had to install a fully equipped laboratory. She's coming around. Shh. Try to speak softly. Don't help her to awake. I'd like to recommend something that's very important. Anything you say. You should have faith in me, Senor Marquis. Don't reveal what we spoke about. And without asking why, follow instructions. I'll do it. You have my word. And don't let her know that I'm no doctor. <sighs> don't be afraid, Brunhilde. It's all right. 
This young man is a good friend of mine, dear. Allow me to introduce Dr. Ulysses Albaran. Doctor? Who was sick? You were, just for a while. But it's over and done with now. I was feeling badly. You, you could say that. Don't you recall anything? I don't understand. Your infirmity. You were very sick. Don't you recall a thing? Try to remember, Brunilda. The doctor's only trying to cure you. Was it a disease? Just what did I catch? That's what I'm trying to determine right now, young lady. You can help by remembering details. Now, please, can't you tell us what happened? Have faith, dear, and speak out. I don't recall anything surprising. I only went to sleep, and just now I woke up. Are you totally sure? Don't be so skeptical, doctor. I don't make up stories. My dear, the doctor's only trying to investigate. That's all for now. I won't ask any more questions. And I assure your excellency that things are getting much clearer. Doctor, I see now that you were right. What do you suggest? I suggest that she lead a normal life, Marquise. She should get out in the sunlight in fresh air on horseback or on foot. The things she prefers to do. I don't that think That is an order and don't forget. Try to get a little rest because dawn is coming on. The Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, handsome. What can I sell you today? Well, I don't know. Look, some of the other fellows are sweet-talking me. Oh? One of them says he'll give me plaque for me. Mm. Another one is doing a big detergent number. Mm. And then there's Auntie Icing and the one with Auntie Rust. And, well, uh, I'm confused. You said you were best. I believe we've never been formally introduced. I have the honor to be Count Super Clean Detergentistic Auntie Icing Butane Platinate Gasoline. Gosh, I didn't know. But, my dear, what's in a name? I believe it's the good you do in this world that's important. Oh, yes. And it's the guarantee. Fill thy tank but once under the great DX trial bond, and shouldst thou believe it is not superior to thy old stuff, uh, you'll get your money back. I made that a decree. It's a matter of honor. Gosh, Count Super Clean DJ. You can call me DX. <laughs> You're wonderful. I know. <laughs> Welcome back to Chillin' Theater. You know, we, we pay big bucks for these movies. It's unbelievable. And, it, and I can't, it, I don't understand how they could possibly have such a load of fuzz and hair in the film schmutz. game. And schmutz. Send us that on tape. No, I know. I it's mean, a, what, what idiots would have that chunk of junk like that on the screen and not notice well, I'll it? I'll tell you what. You and not do anything about You can't. What is that? What is that on there? Man, it looks like, wait, I believe it's something that came out of my pants. <laughs> I did, so actually, I pulled that out of my navel. Bring that over here. Bring that over here. Actually, here, I believe that it is, here, it is, oh, there it is. I think it, wait, it's, hold on. It's the navel lint here. Oh, hold on here. No. Oh. That is, it was a big one this time. It sat in the navel for a oh, long, time. Put it long back, time. put it back. Let, let's put get it back, back in there, see if it can be, stay in there by itself. Yikes. Oh, that's a nice oh. one. Oh, that is just an icky thing right oh. there all the way around. Damn. Oh, it's hard, dude. For as fat as it is, it's hard. Don't <laughs> don't you find the Mexican horror movies a little interesting? I do. I for one thing, the, the bats, <laughs> The bats have bunny ears. Well, no. I don't I, know if you've noticed. No, I have. Well, they hear better. And then they, they can, I know. They, all, they actually, how could you not and they, notice? And they, they swoop. They oh. actually uh, they actually feast on they carrots, swoop. strangely enough, too. They swoop. Have you ever seen oh. them with their little hands? Look actually, out. this is a, here, hand this thing over for a second, Logan. This was actually how I learned to fish. Was with a cane pole. <laughs> I learned to fish with and a, a cane pole with a bat on yeah. the end. Oh, sorry. Just like we that. Just, that's right. We just uh, gave him a, uh, a brisk <laughs> just occurred here in the studio, sadly. Sadly, a very unusual. Yeah. No, actually, this is how I, I went out on the pier with my bat and the fish would leap. How much time is there, Logan? Dead. 
Ten seconds. All right. I'd sit out, and boy, we used to catch crappie, big ones. Big they, ones. Oh, they leap out of the water. Oh, the big bats. crappies there. Big oh, crappies. Yeah. Oh, they're good eating. <laughs> they're good eating. <laughs> they're big good crappies. Eat. Really? Extracting clamic acid in large quantities by Count Cagliostro. Yes, this is the solution. But I can assure you that it isn't going to do you any good, Cagliostro. Don't you think it's better to escape, Your Excellency? Certainly not, Hildegard. Don't you realize how I can use this terrible infirmity that the Count has diagnosed? At a future date? That is to say, if he can't detain it, I'll terminate this crusade and make all men vampires. Who could tolerate such a horror, Count? Don't show your stupidity, Hildegard. Can't you realize the triumph for the Frankenhausens? All humanity bowing to the power of our family. Those vampires in dormant state. They'll always be the serfs, the vampires made by their only master. He is the vampire who rules. And that reign is passed to my first child if I die. So no one can resist the Frankenhausens. They'll dominate humanity. So I must use this desperate measure because there's little time now. At least until I make the clamic acid at the haunted hacienda. Is that a drug? A substance that I'll inject into their veins and the vampires die immediately without having to be burned. That's how we'll get rid of all these bloodsuckers, ending the vampire plague. The drug is something they can't resist. The only thing is, I need time to make many doses. Since there are plenty of monsters out there, I figure in about ten days we'll be ready. Clamic acid can only be found in Mandragoras. In Mandragoras? Yes, but the manor is not the usual plant. So they're very hard to find. And another thing, they don't have white flowers the way the others do. Their flowers are black. Down there near the lake, you'll find the manor you want. Their flowers are black. Yes, I know about that. How'd you find out so fast? Why, you just got here. Well, I, I was sure about it since manor only grow when they are close to vampires. They must have started to bloom when Count Frankenhausen arrived in this region. That's right, Doctor. When the Count came here, the first flowers appeared. I was sure I'd find the species here. And I know the formula with which I can extract this essential acid, gentlemen. I'll use the roots. Another thing. Would you two go down there and help me to get the roots? Wholeheartedly. I'm not about to. But, Crescencio, you mean you're walking out now that I need you so much? Doctor, I don't want anything to do with dead bodies, spirits, or vampires. For other things, call on me when you want for any kind of work, sir. But for this sacrilege, as Father Victor has called it, you'd do better to find another assistant. Crescencio, you're deserting. Well, I guess you're right, Doctor, but I'm against trouble, so excuse me, please. Stay right where you are. I guess you'd prefer to have some monster get his fangs into you. No, you know I don't. Dear Lord, hear my plea or I'll die of fright. Don't let the vampires drink our blood tonight. Then no. sit down there and obey the Doctor. The only thing I'll ask you to do is to cut and sharpen the stakes. Did you understand him? Try to avoid suspicion, because otherwise the priest could ruin things like he did the other night. In that case, I don't have to go to the cemetery later to do the rest? Yes, because who else is going to help us work? No, no, let me repeat it, no! What an imbecile you are. Didn't you understand the things the doctor was telling us? But who would forget a thing like that? He said a vampire will die when you stick a stake in his heart. And he can't get out of his tomb then. Not always. There are times that a stake is all that's needed. But on other occasions, it won't work like that. Oh, no, that just makes things worse then. I'd hate to see one awakened when I start to put the stake in his heart. They can't move, I tell you. I guarantee they can't. They could attack us, stake and all. Don't even say it. Anything like that would mean our complete destruction. The whole race would go under. I'd call it an invasion of vampires. I'm a sinner, Father. I'm a sinner. Come on, come on, get up now. My soul is lost. My soul is lost. Oh, quiet down, man, quiet down. Obviously you sin, but not because you're bad, only because you're ignorant. Do you think a dead man can come to life when he wants to? And just because they drive a stake into his heart, he can't come back to life on Judgment Day? It's only that the doctor said... Yes, yes, I know what the little doctor said. But you mustn't repeat it, because then I'd really consider you a sinner. No one's going to know. I won't yes. tell a soul. Yes, these are only superstitions. 
Only superstition, son. And you mustn't go on with this thing. You mustn't do as that sassy doctor orders you. No, I won't. I swear it. That's the truth, Father. I was so horribly scared that all my nervous system began to fail me. Watch this. <laughs> the dead won't return, so you must not fear, Crescentio. Rather, you should only fear men in their evil acts, because many are bad and ignorant. Yes, Father. I'll be careful to do that. But I tremble when I remember how I had to drive in those stakes. Well, forget all of what you saw out there last night, or you'll tremble more. Did you know this town is full of stupid men? They're champions of stupidity, just class A morons. Thank you, Father. It's all right. If those idiots find out that the dead have returned, anything will happen. Just imagine the fights and riots, and I won't be responsible. Understand? You're not to open your mouth about it. Just as you say, my jaws are closed. And at the right moment, I'll begin to say a few things, and you'll see the people throw that sacrilegious doctor out of town. Isn't this view nice? Marvelous, Doctor. I never imagined that down here at Dead Man's Lake the view was so magnificent. In that case, was the trip worthwhile? Obviously. It's only too bad I didn't come before this. You mean your father forbade it? It was confusing. But now that I see this wonderful view here, it's even more confusing. Why keep me in the house? I'd say that was because he adored you. He could have been afraid you'd get hurt in an accident. The way my mother died. Yes, that could have been the reason. My poor mama and my poor papa. He won't return, I guess. He must forget it. Thinking like that would just make you sad. Yes. What's the matter? Don't you hear? I don't hear a single thing. It's my name. I heard someone calling my name. It's right down there in the lake. Right there, close to the water. You still feel very weak. And you could possibly imagine that you hear things that aren't real. This is no hallucination, I can assure you. Strange ideas entered my mind the minute I arrived here. But now the waters are calling me in such an irresistible manner. Brunhilde, stop. She's making me go. I hear it clearly. It's the voice of my mother. Remember your mother's dead. No, it's her. Remember your mother can't summon you because your mother's dead. She's calling. She's calling. Wake up, Brunhilde. Wake up. Your She's mother's calling. buried in the cemetery in the marble tomb. I saw her. Then you've seen her. Buried there? Well, I... I've seen her tomb. I didn't see her body, but it was there. I wanted to. I didn't see her body after she died. I wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed to. That's all in the past now. And you mustn't look back when tragedy is there. The future is yours, and it holds such fabulous things. Future generations will be <laughs> depending upon us. <laughs> Brunhilde, don't cry anymore. Do you hear me? Don't cry. Your tears make me very sad. Don't think I'm being rude when I say this, but, but I have to tell you. Listen, I don't want your gratitude for what I've been doing for you in these past few days here, because actually there's a good reason for it. I don't follow you. <laughs> I'll say no more right now. Later on, I'll find a way to tell you, and I think you'll understand me then. Until that day, I beg of you, have confidence in me. And accept a present to recall this moment. Something I want you to have. A crucifix. It was Mother's. Uh, I mustn't accept uh, it. Please do accept it, Brunhilde. Just wear it, and I promise that you'll get well sooner than you think. But I, I might lose it. <laughs> God's will, don't you think? In that case, won't you fasten it, please?
Well, then. I think we'd better get to work now. Didn't you come down here to see the lagoon? No. We came to pick Mandragoras. Are you making fun of me? Not in the slightest. I'm completely serious. For this new experiment I'm working on, I'll need certain roots of Mandragoras. I've been told they're here on the shore. It's too bad I wasn't told, because I've seen lots of the place close to the house. There you could have picked all you wanted. The kind I need only grow the lake. They are a strange species. They have black roots instead of white, and the flowers are also black. Now, who would imagine you'd find Mandragoras of this color, growing so close to my estate? Another favor, Your Excellency. Please authorize me to use these facilities whenever I think it necessary. The laboratory is yours. Here's the key, young man. Use it. It's the only one in existence, since the other one was lost with Count Frankenhausen. Let's hope that my memory doesn't fail me, and I can call to mind the complete process for extracting clamic acid. At any rate, I'm extremely grateful, Senor Marquis. <laughs> I'm the one who should be grateful, young man, for your interest. It's terribly easy to be interested when such a lovely girl as your granddaughter is involved in the situation. <laughs> Forgive me, but I must insist upon repeating what I told you about her before. She doesn't know the slightest thing about her father's way of life, nor the terrible destiny that awaits her if you should be so unfortunate as to fail. I'll say it again, Your Excellency. She'll not hear a word about his condition from me. Try not to worry. Today I gave her a present that's going to help to a certain extent. A crucifix. Good morning, Doctor. Well, hello there. And to what do I owe the visit? It's something disagreeable. I seem to have lost the crucifix that you gave me yesterday. How was it lost? It seems we're involved in a mysterious thing, because I admit I tend to lose crucifixes here. Last night when I retired, I had it on, and this morning I couldn't find it. I see. They stole it while you slept, then. Impossible. I was very cautious. Used a double lock on my door. That's a strange thing. Very strange thing. Why is it? Someone robbed me the same as you. Last night they took the mandragoras. Tell me, was the door really locked when you left? Yes, I remember to lock it. And I have the only key right here. Well, then someone has made new keys. That's quite clear. And the thief that took the crucifix and carried off the mandragoras last night must be very scared. And one thing is sure, Brunhilde, this person is planning to stop me in my experiments. He's planning to strike. I must discover who it is. Tell me, do you have faith in me? You know that I do. In that case, will you help me in this? What is it that I'm to do? Can you tell me that? I accompany the doctor this afternoon. No, I'm not a good guesser. To the shores of Dead Man's Lake. To that place? Don't you know that I'm strongly opposed to your going there? Why, Senor Marquis? Is there anything wrong in her going there? Wrong? No, doctor. I simply mean that the place is uninviting. Why must a girl be exposed to more danger? I worry because it's not safe there. But, Grandpa, darling, the lagoon is the most beautiful sight I know. You know so few places around here. Please, I apologize. The whole thing is my fault. It's really not important, Doctor. But I prefer that you didn't take her there again. Then we won't return, sir. She helped me so much that in an hour we gathered all the mandragoras I need. It's true, Grandfather. I picked a large quantity of mandragoras. I made a small map so that we won't forget where we hid them. You'd better take it, Brunhilde. I'd be glad to, Doctor. <laughs> a map to show where you hid flowers? Yes, Grandfather, like the ones used by pirates when they hide their treasures.
You might think we're a little childish, Senor Marquis. But the map that I made is more important than any treasure that the pirates buried. <laughs> Watching Ned the Dead's Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. Here you see Sir Percival Dare greasing his dry, stubborn hair. His rusty armor, too. Now, just a few easy strokes of the comb, and a way to win the hand of fair Lady Ellen. And she's rich, too. While on the other side of the moat lives another suitor who actually has hair like a billy goat. But he's smart. No grease or oil for his hair. No siree. Just new greaseless Vitalis with V7. And one, two, three. His hair stays in place greaselessly. Which one will it be? Grease down, Sir Percy? Mercy! Or our hero who uses greaseless Vitalis? Naturally. So if you'd like to win your princess, get new Vitalis for your hair. New Vitalis with V7 will keep your hair neat all day, the greaseless way. Welcome back to Chiller Theater. Hey, here we are back with Chiller Theater, everybody. It's our end o year version, Invasion of the Vampires. Hey, uh, do you ever get to go up to the lake at all? I mean, uh, you ever been invited up to the lake? Not by myself, no. So. <laughs> well, I didn't ask if you went by yourself. It wouldn't be much no. fun if you go by yourself. No. I don't think. I always think it's nice to go no. with people. Are you, you know, are you talking the submarine races? <laughs> not with you, no. No, I'm not. Uh, as much as I know that you'd come on in here. Now, how would you like it if, because uh, you know, a lot of times we get asked, uh, asked up by friends, you know, it's like, Hey, Jim, you and the little lady want to come up to the lake with us this weekend? He would say, sure. Hmm. Yeah, what lake uh, yeah. What lake do you have a place on? Dead Man's Lake. <laughs> like in the movie, oh. Dead Man's Lake. Now, that is, that property's cheap up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, what's the story with that? Why would anyone name, you what know? Is, what does that go for a square foot? <laughs> is, yeah, you get getting a pretty good deal on Dead Man's Lake. Let me say that. You don't know. You get a lot of frontage, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pretty healthy <laughs> dose of frontage on Dead Man's Lake. We're not that much money. We haven't done any of that. Let's no. go. Three weeks in a row, there's been no slapping. Some. All right, let's, let's do nothing but slap for the next or what? 20 seconds. And that's right. Or what? Or what? <laughs> or what? <laughs> or what? Oh. <laughs> One more slap. Here we go. Mm. And set it in. Oh, it. nice. <laughs> there it is. And both handed. And Oh, yeah, that much time left? What was up with that? Where did my stuff go? My uh, um, my pink stuff. Oh, oh, come on. Don't worry about Where it. Where is it? It's, it's by the line. Oh, here. Oh, man. I told you what. All right. This stuff has been bugged. What are you doing? What are you doing? What was that? Oh, he just gave me a shot of you something should, You bad. should feel that shortly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't feel it shortly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very, very shortly. All right, everybody. We're going to head back and enjoy more of Invasion of the Vampires. Next week, it's the Mad Monster. Stick with us here on Chiller Theater. We love you. We love the Vreedies. suspecting that you stole the Mandragoras and the crucifix, too. I should have realized there were secret passageways in an old building like this. No wonder it did no good to lock our doors at night. So you're the person who did it all. Frau Hildegard, the servant in charge of managing the house. So you're the person who tried to kill me, the only daughter of your master, Count Frankenhausen. And I'll continue to do so. What will you gain? My only object is the Count. My master is he who commands me. I just don't follow you. Let your friend here explain the whole story. He has information you'd like to hear, Brunhilde. Don't listen to her. The woman's completely mad, you know. Madness, you call it? Well, I don't care what others might think or do. I shall continue to follow and assist Count Frankenhausen. 
Say it again. Didn't I hear you say it help, Papa? In that case, you know where he is now. Then you really know where he's at. Don't listen to her. She's insane. Her mind's completely gone. But this girl is about to hear the whole story now. You shut up. Are you going to be sorry? Stupid moron, you can keep your threat. She must hear. Brunhilde suspects her. She must be told the whole story about her father. <laughs> why did you do that to her? I had to do it. I won't explain it to you right now. And why can't you explain what's going on? You're always holding something back. Do you think that I'm still a child? No, you're not a child. But this isn't completely in my hands. I'm not permitting that hag to spoil things. But I have a right to know what happened to my father. No one can prohibit that. Yes, the Marquis can. Brunilda! Brunilda! Open up, Dial! Open the door! Oh, Grandfather. What's going on here? She started to tell Brunhilde something about her father. That's why I struck her. Doctor, I want more facts. But if it's as you say it is, then you were perfectly right. But I have a right to know. I want to know. And you will know, darling. You will know. Hildegard was beginning to be too impertinent, and someone had to silence her. For the time being, I think I'll lock her up so she can't get away. You, better you. give the doctor a hand with her. Here, here, give me that. I hold the candles. And you, darling, you stay here and try to get a little rest. Tomorrow we'll talk about it. Follow me.
Let go of me. I can get along perfectly without you. You're bobbing around worse than a ship in a storm, Don Efren. Let me go. Come on. Come on. Please come on, Don Efren. No. Here they come. Here they come. They've gotten out of their tombs. They've gotten out of their tombs. Who got out of their tombs? Yes, the vampires did. You must be drunk. No, they're coming towards us this moment. I'm warning the whole town. The priest has to know. Those beasts will murder us. The vampires are out. The vampire! Uh. Come on, Don Efren. Who's that idiot that shouts so much? Didn't you hear? The vampires are out. The vampires? They're coming towards town to murder us. Vampires? That's just hogwash. Please hurry or they'll catch us. And then they'll want my blood. And then my face will turn pale and I'll look ugly. Crescencio, you're just an ignorant... Fool, you retarded. Well, please hurry. That man isn't lying. Where are the vampires then? They'll be here in just a moment. Oh, you idiot. There are no vampires. The rumors. That's well, all. I don't know, but I'm plenty scared. I'm going to warn the alcalde now. The vampires are out. The vampires are out. You're an out. idiot. You're retarded. Those rumors don't exist. <laughs> Yes, yes, I think something serious is afoot of the bells are ringing at this hour. Grandfather, what's the matter? I don't know. I really don't. Those are the alarm bells. Something's happening. Yes, yes, I hear it too, but I really don't know what's going on. Could be that it's a fire. Possibly, my dear. Who knows? Since these storms at times bring lightning, and that must have begun a tremendous fire. But then you shouldn't worry. Just forget it and try to rest. I'll send someone into town and find out what it's all about. You'd all better stay in the house. What happened to you? You're bleeding. What is it? It's nothing, nothing at all. Why did you say that we should stay? Because I know what's troubling the people. They're not ringing for volunteers to put out any sudden forest fire. Those bells mean they should prepare their defenses. Defenses? Yes. Another thing we should start preparing. We'll need all the help we can get. I could use about 30 more hands. You see, there isn't much time now. Come here, doctor. Now listen, do you suppose that... It's no supposition, Marquis. It's a certainty. But I understood you to say that only when he's dead with those others... Mm. Uh... It's happened, sir. Tell me about it, please. Well, just now, we fought and I was forced to kill him. I'm sorry. What's this all about? Won't you please tell me, explain this business? What's this about defenses? Who is it that makes us need defenses? Brunhilde, I think it's time that we informed you. This is the correct moment, and you should be told. Wait, don't open up. It might be dangerous. Uh, I'll open it. Open up! Open up! It's Mika Sentio, the Alcalde. They're coming! They're coming! Save yourselves any way you can. What happened to you, Doctor? Nothing. I'll explain later. And all the townspeople saw refuge in the church. But Don Efren stayed out in the street, shouting insults at us, calling us idiots and cowards, and lots of other things. We came running to warn you that they're approaching the hacienda. And now that you know that, we'll run further. Listen, you'd better stay right here. You can't flee from those creatures. They're going to get us. They're going to get us. No, they won't get us. The bell warned us also. When you two arrived, we were preparing a method of defense. Then you already knew. The doctor's well informed about the situation. There's a reason. How will we defend ourselves? There's an effective method. We can hang mandragora roots in the doors and windows. They can't get close to it. Impossible. Dead Man's Lake is two miles away. They'll get here soon. You don't understand. I have mandragoras here. Look, tell me more about it. You can tell me in more detail later on tonight. Now, just what is it that you have all been talking about? Who is approaching the house? The vampires, young lady. You're watching Chiller Theater. We'll be right back. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. 
No man is alone, nowhere under the sky. A prayer, a plea never dies, just echoes and re-echoes, lingering on the air. The call is for you, and you can hear it, even over the wind of a hurricane, the anguish of a father. Everything smashed! You hear. You shelter and clothe the homeless. You feed the hungry. You help rebuild homes, lives. And sometimes the call comes from afar. A little music goes a long way, all the way to Korea, but in the wards where grim, silent battles are fought. Does anyone remember? And you do remember. A birthday, a letter to a loved one, and you say to them, you are not alone. I want to live. I want to see my baby. Your blood given from your veins, your heart, saving a mother's life. All this you do through your American Red Cross. All this and more. Your membership card means you are not alone. You're not alone when you need help. You're not alone when you give help. Answer the call. Join and serve. Welcome back to Chillin' Theater. I love the big bunny-eared bats in Mexico. Oh, there he is again. That's, oh, you know, look out. Look out. You know, what look I out. like, to me, let's say that you're in bed at 2 a.m. Stop. Wait, see ah. if you can get it. See if you can get it. Hold on. Ah. Hold on. Let me give it one. Can I have a shot? I bet you I, I can get it. Let me have one shot. Than, Here we go. Hold on. And... Oh. Nuts. Oh, I got him. I got him. I got him. Rapid fire. Oh, here. Pulse it. I got him. I got him. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, look. Rotate the anything. frequencies. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. All right, so now, <laughs> tell you what. Oh, hello, everybody. All right, that's where you get that oh. thing out of here. I don't know about He's that. Still all right. flying. Now, you know, when you're sitting at home and all of a sudden the church bells start ringing at 2 a.m., and I mean ringing and ringing and ringing. By the way, yeah. pay no attention to the man behind the ladder. Do you think that that's a problem in any way if that happens? Seriously, what do you think? If the church bells start to ring at 2 a.m. incessantly and they will not stop, what do you think then? Is that a problem, do you think, or is that all right? For I you? think I'd send the cops after that hunchback. <laughs> I tell you what, it's exactly. ringing them bells. And especially, I know whoever's ringing in that hunchback, never good. You know what I mean? And not like we're making fun of the hunchback because we don't want to do that. We don't want to be inappropriate. Spider Man. But I'll tell you, you know, when the bells are ringing, <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man with a problem. That's Spider-Man. He's all clogged up. He ate a little too much cheese and he got bound up. There's Spider-Man bound up. Here, wait, hold on. Let's, let's go ahead and you do the Spider-Man and I'll provide the web. Ready? And... <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty good. Let's do that one more time. You ready? And... There we go. There it yes. is. All right. Eh? That's you know, it's hey. funny. This stuff is so much fun, it's unbelievable. This stuff should be inexpensive. Because, boy, it's too bad it's so costly, because that is a whole lot of fun right there. You know what I mean? It is. It's fun in a can. Don't do that. <laughs> no. Do not Don't even. be doing that. Don't. Kids, do not ever try that. <laughs> All right, there we oh. All right, everybody. Get the back to the conclusion. Oh. Yeah. Get. Mandragora is all hung out. All we can do now is wait. You told her? Just now. Only I admitted that you fought and killed Count Frankenhausen. She's too heartbroken. Poor child. Hates to recognize the truth. I'll complete the information later. First, I'm going to talk to her. Now stop crying. Try to calm down. It's horrible. Just horrible. <laughs> Only it's useless to cry. Now you'll be able to understand. And let me repeat this. You should have faith in me. I can save you. I'll try.
child. You don't want to see such a gruesome sight. I don't think you could bear it. That's not important. He's my father. So take me there, I beg of you. No, not right now. It's much better to wait until we bring Count Frankenhausen to his natural state again. You'll see your father's body when his body is normal. Right now, he's nothing more than a vampire, but dead. No! 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 Nothing but lies! Frankenhausen cannot be dead. He'll never die because he cannot be killed. Shut up, Frau Hildegard. Lies, filthy lies. Soon Count Frankenhausen will be master of the world. When he transforms them into vampires, he said he could do it. He'll rule the whole world. There's no way to kill him. Hold your tongue, Hildegard. Don't show more stupidity. The Count's dead, we know. No! No, stop lying. The master can't be dead. No one can kill him, you stupid fools, because he is an immortal soul. Count Frankenhausen has been killed. I know because I did it. <laughs> he wanted to kill me, suck my blood. But he won't hurt you now. I tried to explain it, but you can't understand the danger we're in while those awful monsters still wait outside. There are other things that you must be told. I didn't want to show you this tragic spectacle, but obviously there's no other way. So come along. Man's dead. He had enough liquor in him last night to kill a hundred men.
His death was not due to alcohol. He was killed last night by a vampire. <gasps> because he rejected the Lord, preferring to stay in the street instead of taking refuge in God's house last night. Oh, dear God, have mercy on this man. Amen. Amen. Father, we came down here to ask for your help. And just what can I do for you? I know a way which may detain the vampires. So I came to ask you to gather together all the townspeople for a meeting. Hmm, yes. Well now, son, you must understand that I must be very cautious. Since you always propose methods that are, well, let's say, sacrilegious. Let's hear it then, this idea. Just a second. He was old and pig-headed. That's why he's lying there. Hmm, I guess he wins. I'll call a meeting. No, darling, you mustn't. You shouldn't worry now. Count Frankenhausen is no longer a vampire. He's an inoffensive cadaver, harmless like all others. The same as that group of vampires when I fill their veins and they return to normal. And my granddaughter, is she going to get well? I can assure you, Senor Marquis. The climic acid is the thing that will cure your granddaughter since the malediction will disappear forever, and that's freedom for the Frankenhausens.
glad that you did, Count Frankenhausen. Say goodbye to Don Efren. Here lie Count and Countess Frankenhausen and Frau Hildegard, their faithful servant who would not abandon them even when they journeyed to the great beyond. Hey everybody, we're back for Invasion of the Vampire. What two things now? We learned two things. What are they? That Mexican vampires can walk around with the stakes sticking out of their chest right. after the head vampire is dead. Correct. I don't get that. I don't either. And also, Candelabra Boy, his name is Nacho. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nacho. Making me hungry here at the hey, end of the show. Nacho. I wonder if there's any place open this late. Bring me that. Get myself some. We can you thank I mean? Kay Gordon Murray for that because I'm sure Nacho wasn't his real name in the original Mexican version. <laughs> you don't think so? So we make fun of these movies that have been so lamely dubbed into English. What's your favorite Mexican food, Doc? Oh, all kinds. Really? Yes. Oh, you're big on that? Yeah, cheesy, tomato me. Tomato meat. Cheesy tomato, tomato meat. meat. Yeah, tomato, tomato meat. Tomato meat. That's actually a request. Uh, yeah, what was it like for your uh, 40 bucks? Well, could you tomato meat, please? <laughs> I tell you what. I don't know what that meant. I don't know what that meant. All right, everybody. Tell you what. We'd like to thank you for listening and watching this year. It's been a thank delightful you. 2006 as we embark on 2007. That's right. Our we, next movie is on next year. And we have some <laughs> resolutions here. First of all, we will try not to suck nearly as bad as we did this last year. Okay? We're going to try... No, that you can stay. I uh, I did my share. I All built right. a freaking robot. That's you? right. He built a freaking robot. Let's lean forward together again. He built a freaking <laughs> robot or what? Whoa! And we almost cracked the board. Okay. Now, we will try not to be as lousy as we were. We will try to find I'm movies sorry. that maybe you haven't seen so recently. You never we know. We will try to actually prepare our... Ah, well, hold on. I don't want to get crazy. You got to say, you got to only do things that it is people are actually can do. You know, everybody says they're going to stop smoking, they're going to stop eating. I'm not going to do any of those things. We're going to just try and be better on the show next year, aren't we? <laughs> All right, so stick around if you want right here on. Good stuff. And, and let's, let's see. <laughs> I guarantee you. Sorry be about that. Right there. Hey, happy new year, everybody. See you next let's year. Thanks for watching Ned the Dead and Doc Moreau. Remember to check out their stuff at nedthedead.com.